given everything right. that has happened. Okay. And, I, and I, particularly, as not even as a League of Ireland fan, but as a, as a football fan, I mean, we've had situations where League of Ireland supporters for years, including clubs, have been trying to explain exactly how the FA operates. They have ridiculed us, they've laughed at us, they threw some of us out of football grounds for trying to expose the incompetence within the, within the organisation. We had a situation and where they actually described the League of Ireland as the problem child. We were not the problem child. The FEI were the absentee fathers. And I, forgive me my language because I, I'm angry about this. They were the absentee fathers who didn't give an absolute bollocks about the League of Ireland and continue to not care about the League of Ireland. And somebody needs to say that because it hasn't been said vocally enough. And I apologise for my language, Chair. Okay, well, but uh, I can understand your anger. I don't apologise for the sentiments behind it okay. because there are a lot of League of Ireland supporters out there. There's a lot of football supporters out there, not just League of Ireland supporters, who are really angry at what's happening right now. We have a situation where the FAI, for whatever reason, and I'm not going to get into reports or anything like this or finger pointing because I'm going to respect what the Chair has asked me not to say at the start of the meeting. Um, but we have a situation where the very future of Irish football is on the brink here. It is on the brink. And we are reliant on an organisation which has proved it can't operate with due diligence to actually be the guardians and the saviours of Irish football. Now, I do not want to see a situation where the FEI is liquidated. I don't think anyone in this room wants to see that situation. One, the consequences are they're too great to even comprehend at the moment. But I am starting to come to the belief that if we are serious about protecting the future of Irish football, then you may end up with a scenario where the FAI goes into examinership. And while it's an examinership, there is an alternative structure put in place to take it back out of examinership. Now, if that was to happen, it would require financing, possibly state financing. And that is the only way that you are going to protect your national teams or your, your leagues, as well as your grassroots football. It's the only way you're going to do it. Because if it is liquidated under the articles of UEFA, your domestic leagues are gone, your national teams are gone. They're all gone. So you, we cannot, whatever our opinion of the FEI is and its management structure, we cannot allow a situation where the FEI is liquidated because the consequences are, as I said, unbearable to think about. If it goes into examinership, somebody has to step in. And we need to be preparing for that now, Minister. We need to be preparing for that eventuality. Maybe it will never happen, but I don't want to be waking up some morning and saying the FAI has gone into examinership and we are not prepared for somebody to take a back out to protect Irish football. Because if that is your responsibility as Minister, it is all our responsibility in here. And it's a responsibility of football fans right throughout this, this country to do that. And we need to start preparing for that. The other thing I would, and this is the last question, I welcomed earlier the announcement around the regional development officers and the 60 yeah. regional development officers that are going to be put in place. But maybe there's a bit of misunderstanding about how this operates. Um, they provide the coaching. They don't answer the phones. They don't organise the schools to compete in the programmes. Who's going to do all of that if we are not funding them? If we're not putting in place the funding to allow that to happen, 
We can fund the development officers who will go out and provide the coaching, but if there's nobody in an office somewhere organising those soccer schools or summer soccer schools who are organising kits to be delivered, then how does it work? How does it work, Minister? Should I take this? Thank yes. you. I, well, first of all, yeah. Okay. Okay, no okay just... Sir. I, I'm out of them with the, almost everything you say in, this, in the sense that we hope that what we are going to embark upon, if the FAI cooperates, and there is no sign that they're in full cooperation yet, is a completely fresh chapter here. And we do, and I, at the risk of repeating myself, we will reduce the risk of those things like examinership or liquidation, which you are talking about. And I think it's right it should be raised here. But we will reduce the risk of that immediately, the process of independent directors come in. There will be more confidence from everybody, and the stakeholders I'm talking about, I suppose, is, the, is UEFA and the banks and the FAI itself and others, and ourselves particularly, in the FAI, or whatever organisation it's called at the time, but, uh, we're talking about a change of name, the moment that that particular uh, key is unlocked, that door is unlocked. And that's what we're looking for. Uh, and I think it, it is a real opportunity we may have here to do the sort of things you're talking about, and specifically the League of Ireland. This is a, there could be an occasion for something really radical, for some real reform coming out of this. It is, this is a, this is a, a chasm in which we're, into, into which we're star, staring, but there are opportunities here for something which has been going wrong for many, many years, obviously. And there are great opportunities here for us to do the things you're talking about, in particularly the League of Ireland, in particularly th things like that. If we have a completely new group who aren't captured by the kind of prejudices and the loyalties of the past, we, set, we are going to have an opportunity, hopefully in the next week or two days or two weeks, if we get those people in there. We need a really strong chief executive. That's absolutely vital. We need a really strong group of independents who will turn their back on the past. We need a really strong, we need a, we need a really strong new chairman. Those things will set example from the top. It's not the solution, but it's part of the solution. And I, I, I think that everybody around here recognises that. One of the problems, and the principal problem, has been just diabolical corporate governance. If we can sort that out, we will sort the confidence issue, hopefully soon. After that, we'll be able to move on the <coughs> detail, some of which is really none of our business, although you've addressed it. So, but we recognise that there's symptoms of things that are go going wrong. And our ambition and our determination is that we will get those particular parts in place very, very shortly. And then we'll be able to address the issues that you're talking about. Now, obviously, there are sensitivities about us getting too involved, and we're not going to breach those sensitivities. But government policy certainly is important and an important factor. Government <laughs> confidence is an important factor. And we will have confidence if we see steps to reform which are radical enough to satisfy the requirements of corporate governance and, the, and also begin to, begin to set in train an improvement in the finances. I agree with everything you've said, Deputy Brown, I think. Uh, yes, absolutely everything you've said. And we are meeting this evening as a matter of urgency, SIP2, in order to hear exactly the sort of things that you're saying, not identical, because it's important to us and we recognise that we recognise the suffering, but the importance of them as stakeholders and the contribution that they're going to make to the FAI in the future, <coughs> or whatever organisation it is. Sorry. But in terms of the admin staff that are needed... Yeah. I'm aware that you have to go, but yeah. I'm also aware that Senator Daly hasn't got in yet, in fairness yeah. to him. So just one second, just well, one point I just want to make is that just based on what you said there, yeah. the key appointment from your perspective for that change yeah. is the independent chairperson coming in. Indepe well, the independent but, no, no, directors... I mean, the, but if the, if the independent directors don't come in yeah. and they haven't come in, doesn't that... Is there a house of cards then? 
Well, so we don't contemplate that happening. No, no, but, but they haven't said yes. That's the no, point. I know. Yeah. But so I think that's the danger, isn't it? There are a lot of dangers, Chairman, yeah. here it, that, yeah. that we're facing. We're trying to overcome them one by one. Oh, but, I understand yeah. that. I'm just pointing out yeah. a key point to me. Sorry, Senator Daly. 